управлению международному бизнесу в Германии в этом университете. Наш докладчик Трэвис Стилкнер. Все не стесняемся, как всегда, задавать вопросы. Спасибо еще раз, что подключились. And Travis, uh, you can start. Okay, thank you very much. Um, again, my name is Travis Stoltner. I am uh, here in Heilbronn, Germany at uh, Heilbronn University of Applied Sciences, Faculty of International Business. So I'd like to welcome you all and thank you very much for joining us for today's session. Um, so I'm going to cover quite a bit of information in the presentation. First, I'll talk about Heilbronn as a city and then our university, um, some of the different programs that are offered within our faculty, um, what you will need in order to apply, um, and some uh, advantages that you have by studying with us here in Habron. Um, so first, uh, first off, um, some of you may not know where Habron um, is located. Obviously, we're in Germany, um, and this is in pretty much the center of Europe. So. Um, we're only 600 kilometers from Paris, uh, 600 kilometers from Berlin, not far from Munich. Um, so we really are a very convenient location uh, to reach uh, all over Western Europe. Um, the city itself is considered to be a, a medium-sized uh, city by German standards. We have a population of around 125 residents. Um, it's a it's a small it's a medium sized city, but we're surrounded by a lot of nature here um, around Heilbronn itself. You find uh, vineyards surrounding our cities. Uh, you can look out the windows of our university and you see uh, vineyards climbing the hills around the city. Um, that being said, we are um, in the heart of the red wine production area of Germany. Um, so you have lots of opportunities to get out into nature and to, to see everything that Southern Germany has to offer. Um, this is also an area of Germany that's very rich in culture. Um, the, you, you've probably seen quite a bit of, uh, you know, the typical dress or historical dress here in, in Germany. And this is an area where you, you where this kind of came from. Um, not far from here, you find the Black Forest, which may be also an area that you're familiar with. Um, here in Albron itself, we're a very international city. Um, we have a wealth of cultural events, um, lots of opportunities for recreation, lots of bicycle paths, for example. Um, and we have a, a good variety of restaurants serving not only German food, but all types of international um, cuisines. Um, here in the Habron region itself, we have a lot of industry. Um, this is the industrial south of Germany. So you find um, a large number of companies in the automotive industry and the automotive supplier industry like uh, Porsche and Daimler, uh, both of which are headquartered uh, very close to us in Stuttgart. Um, another brand that you may be familiar with is Lidl or Kaufland. Um, those are actually headquartered here in our city. Um, other types of companies, we have Knorr, which is in the food industry. Uh, we have Beckla, which is uh, an IT company. Um, so there's lots of opportunities in the area to, to gain entry into the workforce uh, following your studies, um, as well as uh, plenty of opportunities to find and valuable internships as part of your studies. Um, regarding the university itself, um, we're a lar one of the larger institutions um, in, Germ in uh, the state of Baden-Württemberg. We have about 8,500 students um, spread over four campuses. We have a total of seven faculties um, that offer 31 bachelor's programs and 18 master's programs. Um, and our uh, programs of study are focused around business engineering and informatics. Um, and we uh, are very much pra uh, practice focused. Um, here in Germany, we have two types of uh, universities. We have what's called a universität, uh, which is more focused on theory and research. Um, and then we have universities of applied sciences, which are more practice focused. Um, and we fall into the second category. Um, you can see uh, pictures here um, of our four campuses. Uh, we have the Bildungskampus, which is uh, where our faculty is located. And this is directly in the city center of Halbron. So it's very easy access uh, to run into the city for dinner or to get together with friends and so forth. 
Um, our oldest campus is the campus Halbron Sondheim, and this is in a neighborhood just a bit uh, south of us, also within walking distance of the city center. Um, and this fact, this is the, the location where um, some of our engineering and IT faculties are located. Um, a little further away from Halbron itself, we have two campuses, one in Kunzelzau and one in Schwäbisch Hall. Um, if you're studying here in our faculty, there's not much reason to travel to these other uh, to these other locations. They're about 45 minutes away, um, but they're certainly nice places to visit if you're looking for a, a weekend trip somewhere. Um, so a little more about the buildings campus. This is a very new campus. It was uh, officially opened in 2018, I believe. Um, so everything is pretty much brand new. Um, here on the campus, you find uh, our Mensa, which is our cafeteria for lunch. Uh, we also have a, a convenient cafe if you're just looking for a, a, a light snack or, um, or coffee between classes. Um, we have a very uh, nice and brand new large uh, library on campus called the LIB, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and then uh, obviously we have your all of your courses are taught here um, in modern uh, course rooms. Um, so to talk a little more about our faculty, um, we have about 1,500 students that are taught uh, here in our uh, in our faculty, um, and they're enrolled in our either four bachelor's of arts programs or three master of arts programs. Um, two of our programs are taught entirely in English. So for those two programs, there's no requirement to know German. Um, but all of our bachelor's programs do require uh, knowledge of German. Um, we have about 90 partner universities worldwide. So if uh, one of your interests is to study abroad as part of your studies, there's lots of opportunities in order to do so. Um, we're a very international faculty. Um, so there's more than 30 nationalities rep represented among our students. Um, beyond that, there's uh, more than 10 different nationalities uh, represented by our professors and lecturers. Um, so just merely being here on campus, you really do get this sense of, uh, of internationality. Um, it's not uncommon to hear several different languages being spoken as you approach our buildings or within our buildings. Um, so this is something that's really nice and something that um, I think our students really value um, uh, with their time studying here. Um, we have uh, more than six languages that students are able to learn as part of their studies. Um, some of those are actually integrated into the curriculum of the programs, and I'm going to uh, cover this in a, in a few minutes. Um, and then we have uh, more than 75 of our courses are taught in English uh, each semester. Um, so uh, if, you're, if your German maybe isn't uh, your strong suit, uh, you have the opportunity to, to study as well in English here. Um, so before I start talking um, a lot about our different programs, I first want to do a short survey with you to kind of get an idea of what it is that you're looking for. Um, so I'm going to launch the survey now, and hopefully you guys are able to, to see this now. Um, so first, I'd like to know what type of uh, program are you looking to study, uh, whether it's a bachelor's or a master's degree? We'll give it a few more seconds. All right, perfect. So it looks like we have a good number of you that are interested in, uh, in bachelors as well as masters. So so luckily, I'm going to be covering both of those topics today, so you'll get a good idea of what we offer as far as the international business faculty when it comes to, uh, to the different programs of study. 
And uh, secondly, it looks like we have a good mixture of uh, what your interests are. Um, here in the faculty, we offer international business and intercultural management, um, as well as tourism and wine marketing and management. Um, so I'm going to be covering all of these. Um, and I guess now you're able to, to see the results of the, of the survey. Um, so I'm going to head back to the presentation. Um, so what are some of the key benefits of studying at our faculty? Um, every year we have about 150 international students that come to our university. So as I said before, you really do get this, uh, this sense of an international campus. Um, beyond our full-time students, we have a very strong exchange program with our partner universities. Um, so you get, a, you get a chance to interact with people from all over the world, which is, which is really a nice benefit for you. Um, we were just recently um, able to get uh, international accreditation through EFMD for one of our bachelor's programs, and this is the EVIS program. Um, this is a, a pretty prestigious honor that we've, that we've been able to obtain. We're working on this for our other, uh, for our other programs as well. Um, all of our professors and staff um, are coming with multi multidisciplinary and international and academic backgrounds. Um, as a University of Applied Sciences, our professors are required to have uh, uh, practical experience in industry before they uh, come to teach here in the in the faculty in our university. Um, so you're able to to really get uh, firsthand knowledge of how things really are working when it comes to entering the workforce and actually working for a company. Um, and with those professors and those relationships, they bring um, you know contacts to international companies um, with them. So you, you really do get to benefit from this. Um, also uh, of interest is that uh, you have the opportunity to improve your written and spoken English skills. Um, we offer from level A1 to C1 in English, um, and as well as a lot of other languages. Um, so this is something that you're able to build either as part of your studies or alongside your studies. Um, and then here within the faculty, we have different clubs um, that are focused on uh, the different areas of study. We have our Connecting IB, which is uh, more geared towards the international business students. Um, and then we also have um, the uh, Tourism Hospitality Management Club, uh, which is more focused on the tourism uh, uh, clubs or tourism students. Um, as I said before, we have a lot of partner universities, uh, currently more than 90, um, and those are all over the world. So if one of your goals is to broaden your, uh, your study abroad experience beyond just Germany, you really have a good opportunity to do that when you study with us. Um, we also offer double degree programs. So for example, if you, with one of our double degrees, if uh, there's a university that we have this, an agreement with in France, for example, um, you would be able to obtain both a French and a German degree as part of your, your studies. Um, so here is uh, an overview of our seven programs that are available within our faculty. Um, as I said before, we have four Bachelor of Arts programs and we have three Master of Arts programs. Um, regarding international business, our Bachelor of Arts program is called International Business Intercultural Studies, um, and our Master of Arts program is called International Business and Intercultural Management. Um, with our, in our specialty area of tourism and hospitality management, we offer two Bachelor of Arts, uh, one in tourism management and hotel and restaurant management, um, as well as two Master of Arts programs, the first being International Tourism Management and the other being Sustainable Tourism Development. Um, and finally, we have an interesting program in wine management um, in our Bachelor in Wine Marketing and Management. So I'm going to now go into a little more detail on each of our programs. Um, Generally, um, you know, just to summarize the what's offered as part of our bachelors, all of our bachelors are seven semester programs that end with a thesis. And during this, uh, during these seven semesters, you collect 210 BCTS. Um, we have an extension ca uh, catalog, extensive catalog of courses covering core business functions like uh, economics and strategic management, uh, human resources. 
uh, finance and accounting, um, as well as courses in, in, liter in language and culture, um, and then interesting courses that cover emerging topics in business. Uh, for most of our, for all of our bachelor's programs, there's a foreign language that's integrated as, into the studies. So uh, as part of your normal required courses, there is a requirement that you take a foreign language, a foreign language. Um, there is a semester dedicated to an internship uh, included in all of our bachelor's programs. Um, we highly encourage our students to study abroad at one of our partner universities. Um, this is typically done in the fourth semester of your studies. Um, and around 85% of the courses are offered in English. I'm, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but this is more or less the, the flow of our bachelor's programs. Um, in the first and second semesters, you're covering the basic studies. Um, in your third and fourth uh, semester, you're going into more advanced topics and you're looking more at um, the, the more specific majors and minors or areas of focus that you plan to do as part of your, your program of study. Um, again, in the fifth semester, um, you're doing an internship. Um, and then um, after that, uh, in our sixth and seventh semesters, you're returning back to these advanced topics. Um, and this all culminates in a bachelor's thesis. So our, uh, the first program I'm gonna talk about is our International Business Intercultural Studies program. This is, has the acronym IBIS. <clears throat> um, this program is a solid and internationally oriented program. It includes practical business management essentials, um, and it has this focus on intercultural competencies. Um, as part of the program, you choose um, different specializations that you want to, to, to learn as part of your studies. Um, and you also uh, focus in on a particular cultural area or language. Um, and you can see here that um, there's four different options for you to study in this cultural area and language studies. Uh, you can focus on Arabic in the Orient, uh, French in the Francophone uh, world, uh, Russian in Eastern Europe, and Spanish in Hispanic countries. Um, and you decide this uh, at the very beginning of your of your studies here, um, and this follows you through until the end of your studies. Um, in the third semester, at the end of the third semester, you're choosing uh, which specializations that you want to do. You, you pick both a major and a minor, um, and you have five different options to do here. Um, this is our program that's accredited by EFMD. Um, so again, this is something that, that really proves the, the, the solidness of this program. Um, our next program is Tourism Management, which we uh, commonly refer to as TM. Um, and this program prepares students to become specialists in the tourism industry with a focus on sustainable tourism concept, concepts. Um, as part of this uh, program, there's lots of excursions and industry events that students participate in. Um, so you're not only um, you know, learning the theory in your classes, you're actually working hands-on on different projects as part of the program. Um, you're gonna, you'll, you'll build knowledge and confidence in a foreign language, um, and you'll also focus in on a specialization. Um, as part of the program, you're required to, to study foreign languages, and you have the option of Arabic, French, Russian, Spanish, or English, plus some business electives. Um, and then you have uh, quite a few uh, specializations that, are, that you're able to focus in on, uh, for example, business travel or uh, tourism marketing or sustainability in tourism. Um, next, we have our uh, bachelor's in hotel and restaurant management. Um, and in this uh, program, we prepare students to become specialists uh, for a variety of sectors in the hotel and restaurant industry, including systems catering. Um, this is a small group um, with many excursions, guest lectures, and events. So um, you really get a chance to be out in the world um, and experience daily life as part of the restaurant and hotel industry. Um, and it's a perfect complement to perhaps students that already have some training in the hospitality industry. Um, and just like with our tourism management bachelors, um, students in our HM 
uh, bachelor's program also uh, learn languages as part of their curriculum, um, and they have the option of Arabic, French, Russian, Spanish, and English. Um, and then they also choose a specialization as part of their studies. And you can see here, um, there's four different options that are available. Um, next, we have our wine marketing and management bachelor's program. Uh, we call it WMM. Um, and in this program, uh, students uh, are trained to become specialists and experts in the various sectors of the wine industry. Uh, we have small groups in this uh, program as well, along with many excursions, guest lectures, and events. Um, an interesting uh, part of this program is that we actually um, have our own uh, Haubron University wine. Um, so within this program, you're actually working within an actual wine producing uh, organization. Um, again, with this program, there's a language requirement uh, that you, you're going to learn a language um, while you study in the program. Again, the same language uh, possibilities as in the previously mentioned uh, programs. Um, and here you uh, have three specializations to choose from, uh, wine, tourism, hospitality, and luxury wine and beverage. Um, so you can see here what the admission requirements are for our uh, four bachelor's programs. Um, basically, you know, you're obviously required to have a, a, a entrance qualification that qualifies you to study a bachelor's. Um, in a lot of countries, this is a, a high school diploma. Here in Germany, we call this an abitur. Um, there's a requirement that you speak German at a C1 level, so this is a fluent level. Um, and then a proficiency in English of at least A2. As I've mentioned before, um, a lot of our courses are offered in English, um, so it's really advantageous that, that your English is also uh, very good. And you can find more information about the language requirements and uh, what you would need in order to prove your different levels of German or English uh, by visiting our website. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this, uh, slide, but this uh, more or less shows you what we look at when we're choosing the students uh, to admit into our program. Um, so it's in most cases, it's heavily dependent on the average grade of your high school, uh, your overall uh, GPA from your high school diploma. Uh, but we also look at, for example, um, your, your grades in English um, to see how well you speak English or some of your other um, extracurricular activities um, that kind of prove your interest in what it is that you're planning to study here. Um, so now I'm gonna uh, continue on to our Master of Arts programs. Um, we offer three uh, programs um, at the master's level. All of our masters are three semester programs which end with the thesis. Um, so altogether, you would receive 90 ECTS as part of the master's programs. Um, two of these programs are entirely taught in English and don't require any German knowledge at all. Uh, for these two programs, you do have to have a very high level of English, um, which you must prove through the admission process. Um, additionally, we have one program that's taught in a mix of English and German um, in this program. Um, you're required to prove uh, German uh, knowledge at a fluent level, um, as well as English. Um, all of our master's programs are very small groups. Um, we tend in each of our programs to admit 15 to 20 students. Um, and this uh, gives us the opportunity to, to really uh, focus in and, and work on um, collaborative education uh, possibilities. Um, all of our, our groups are very small, so they're able to work in, in teams and really like dig down into different issues. Um, we also offer practice-focused excursions. For example, with our tourism program, um, we offer, uh, we have as part of our curriculum, um, an excursion where you actually work hand in hand on a real life project with an international company. Um, we have a strong emphasis in all three programs on sustainability and intercultural management. These are uh, very important topics in today's world as we're uh, global, uh, within global business, you're gonna be working with people from different cultures. Um, and as you probably know, sustainability is something that's really driving a lot of change in business at the moment. 
Um, so this is something that we really do focus on as part of all three of our programs. Um, there isn't a requirement to study abroad or to do an internship as part of our master's programs, but we strongly encourage you to do it. We think it's really important, especially for your future career possibilities, that you have some practical experience and some international exposure um, when you're out looking for a job after your studies. So we highly encourage you, all, all of our students, to do this. Um, here is a, a snapshot of our master's programs. Again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this. Uh, but basically from this slide, you can see that um, in the first and second semesters, we have all of our courses that are taught in person here in Halbron. And then we have this third semester that's dedicated to, uh, to writing your thesis. Uh, with our thesis, um, you have uh, six months in order to write it. So it typically takes a full semester in order to, to do all of the research um, and, uh, and all of the practical uh, uh, aspects of writing your thesis. Um, and so once you have completed these three things, you graduate with a Master of Arts. Um, so the first program is our International Business and Intercultural Management program. Um, and this program prepares students for leadership roles in international organizations. Um, and it focuses not only on traditional topics like marketing, uh, economics, uh, human resources, um, but it also integrates um, really important aspects in today's world of intercultural awareness, sustainability, and social responsibility. Um, and through our program, students learn how to examine global business issues from different perspectives. Um, you can see here that some of the courses that are taught as part of the program include financial analysis and international economics, um, as well as global marketing and sustainability and uh, CSR. An interesting uh, course within this program is our intercultural communication and management course. Um, we dedicate a lot of the curriculum or time spent during the program to these to these issues. And we talk about uh, intercultural communication and management, not only at a global level, but we also focus in on different regions of the world in the second semester. Um, so as a result of completing the program, students are really um, equipped to handle different types of situations that managers might encounter as they're, uh, as they're managing a group of, uh, or a team of employees or, or coworkers um, who are dispersed around the world. Um, with this program, it's generally about, uh, one, about uh, one third to 50% of the students are coming from outside of Germany. As I said before, um, there's no requirement that students speak German. Um, so that, that actually increases the number of international students in this program. Um, our, next, uh, our next program is our International Tourism Management Program. We call this NITEM. Um, and in this program, students, are, students will be prepared for management positions in international and cross-cultural tourism and hospitality environments. Um, and we focus in this, uh, you know, through the studies in this program, uh, you're not only focusing on like traditional topics like HR, finance, and projects, um, but you learn about those things both generally as well as with this focus on tourism. Um, so if tourism is your goal for your career, this really gives you a solid foundation to work in different types of uh, fields within a company in the tourism sector. Um, in this program, um, we have different types of courses, many of which are held together with our students from the other master's programs. Uh, for example, our um, human resource management and financial analysis courses are held together with our MEBIM students. Um, and then we also have uh, courses that are held together with our third master's program in sustainable tourism development, uh, where they get to join students of that program for courses uh, such as sustainable tourism management or tourism policy uh, planning and development. Um, and really interesting part of this program is in the second semester, there's a integrated tourism project. Um, and this is that project that I, that I alluded to before, um, where students are actually working on a real life project uh, with the international company. Um, in previous years, we've had students that have worked on projects that required them to travel internationally, uh, for example, to Sri Lanka or to Costa Rica, uh, Tunisia, South Africa. Um, so this is really a highlight of this program. Um, the MITEM program is, is 
our most international program, uh, generally we're going to have more than 50% of our students coming from outside of Germany. Um, so with this program, like you really do get to get to meet students from all over the world. Um, and finally, our third master is in sustainable tourism development. Uh, we use the acronym NTE, um, which is the abbreviation based on the German name. Um, and in this master's program, students are prepared to become experts with uh, interface competencies in uh, planning and sustainable development of tourism destination, des destinations. I mean, it enables students to innovatively meet the challenges of a globalized world with limited resources. Um, there's a lot of excursions that are included in this program as well. Um, some of these excursions are more regional excursions around Talbran, um, and some potentially could be more international. Um, in this program, like I said, uh, when I spoke about MITEM, there's some courses that are together with our other master's programs. Um, but in addition to those, um, there's also courses in public economics, uh, planning and law, tourism, geography. Um, and then within all of our master's programs, there's a, a heavy emphasis on research methods. Uh, you know, as part of the, the course of the program, you're going to be writing a lot of academic papers. Um, and then in the end, you're going to be writing a, a fairly detailed thesis about a topic in, in business or in your field of study. Um, so learning um, the best ways of research and having this solid research foundation is built into our programs. Uh, here are the admission requirements for our master's degrees. Um, all three programs require that you have an undergraduate degree, meaning a bachelor's degree, um, with a minimum GPA of 2.5. Um, on a German scale, this means 2.5 to 1. Um, this may be different in your country, uh, but 1 is the best grade here in Germany, um, and 5.0 is the, the worst grade or failing grade. Um, so for our programs, you need at least a 2.5. Um, for our MIBEM and MITEM programs, this degree needs to be in business studies or in a business-related discipline. Uh, for NTE, this can be, your bachelor's degree can be in business studies as well as in social sciences or environmental studies. Um, all of our programs require a high proficiency in English. This means for MIBEM and MITEM, um, it's required that students uh, submit proof of their English knowledge by either taking an IELTS, TOEFL, Cambridge, or Oxford Test of English. Um, it's similar with NTE. There are a few other additional ways to prove your English skills with the NTE program. Um, and then as far as German, there's no German required for MIBEM and MITEM. Um, NTE requires a C1 because some of the courses are going to be taught in German. Um, while I say that it's not required that you have knowledge of German, I can, I can assure you that it's, it's a good, it's of interest to you to speak some German just simply for the conveniences of living here in Germany. You can't expect everyone um, outside of the university to speak English. So, um, we offer a wide range of courses in German here. Um, so if uh, we always encourage our students to uh, to take advantage of learning German while they're studying here. Um, and then I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but um, these are the uh, considerations that we take into account when choosing which students to admit into our master's programs. Uh, for all three programs, the grade or the average uh, grade point average from your bachelor's degree um, weighs heaviest, um, but then there's other possibilities to get bonus points um, through our selection process. Um, so uh, you may be asking how you would join us um, for, for either studying a bachelor's or a master's here in Heilbronn. Uh, for students, um, I think everyone joining today most likely um, has an education that is not from Germany. Um, and so for all of you, this would require that there's that you take two steps. 
Um, the first is to apply to Studi and Colleague Constance. And this is an independent organization that's going to review all of your documents uh, from your high school or early education um, in order to determine if that qualification will is will is equivalent to the German qualification. Um, so they're going to take a look and make sure that um, you have uh, everything necessary in order to study a bachelor's or a master's here in Germany. Um, this is a, a process that takes some time. Um, so we recommend that you do this, or you at least start this process um, at least six weeks before the deadline uh, for the semester that you'd like to apply for. Um, so for, there's two of our programs um, offer admission in the summer term. Um, and those are, our IBIS program, our International Business Intercultural Studies program, as well as our Tourism Management program. Um, so if, you're, if you'd like to apply to join in the summer semester, um, you would need to start this process no, no later than December 1st. Um, for all of our programs that start in the winter semester, um, we would recommend that you, you start this process no later than June 1st. Um, I see there's a typo here on this slide, but uh, for the, this is for the winter semester, there sh you should get this process started by June 1st. Um, and during this, uh, as part of this process, you're going to need to submit um, quite a few documents to Studi and Colleague Constance. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you'll receive a certificate of recognition, um, and then you'll need to submit this document when you apply to um, our university directly, which is step two. Um, our deadlines for the summer semester, again, these would apply only to EBIS and TM, is January 15th. Um, and uh, for all of our programs, you can apply for the winter semester, and the deadline uh, for this intake is July 15th. Um, and remember, these are hard deadlines, so um, if you submit something after these dates, or uh, don't submit everything that's required, then we're not able to consider your application. Um, the next question you may have, uh, I already see this uh, in, in the Q and A, um, how much does it cost? Um, here in the state of Baden-Württemberg, um, unfortunately we have a tuition fee of 1,500 euros per semester of study. Um, this is something that we don't determine here at the university itself. It's, it was decided at the federal state level. Um, we're not very happy about this, but it's something that we unfortunately are having to live with. Um, so beyond this uh, tuition fee, which is applicable to all, um, all students from, that are citizens of non-European Union countries, um, all students have to uh, pay a administrative fee of 160 euros per semester. Um, you can find some information about different funding opportunities and scholarships um, by following the links here in the presentation. Uh, most of the, um, the scholarships that are awarded either by DAD or the Baden-Württemberg scholarships, um, these are something that you apply for after you've gained admission. Um, so these, you know, you can certainly read up on the different possibilities here, but um, applying in advance may not be possible. Um, so beyond the tuition and the, and the uh, semester fees, uh, you may be interested in how much it, it, it costs to live here in Germany. Um, generally for rent, it's about 300 to 500 euros per month, uh, for around 165. Um, and then you can see here other details. Um, maybe a good rule of thumb is that, uh, you know, over the, for a bachelor's degree, for example, you're studying for seven semesters. Um, you would, uh, it, it, I think maybe a good estimate for you would be 10,000 euros um, to cover the entire length of your studies. So um, the next part of the presentation just talks about student life here. Um, here are a few uh, pictures of the different facilities that, uh, that we offer. Um, our university dormitories um, 
we have different possibilities. There's both um, uh, uh, possibilities through private student dorms as well as student dorms that are organized through the university. Um, you can see a picture here um, on the left of our um, student dorms organized by uh, student in Berg Heidelberg. Um, this is where most of our students are living. Um, in, in these dorms, you have a small kitchenette as well as a private room. Um, here on the buildings campus, you have uh, two different possibilities for meals and snacks. We have a, a, a nice menza which serves hot food that changes daily, um, as well as a cafeteria for small snacks and coffees and beverages and so forth. Um, we have modern uh, computer labs here on campus. Um, there's two here in the building um, where you study. It's uh, the end building where our faculty is located. Um, and then beyond that, there's also computer labs um, in Sondheim at our other campus here in Halbron, um, as well as in the library. Um, and finally, we have our one campus library called uh, LIV, L-I-V. Um, it's brand new, as I mentioned before. It's very large, and there's lots and lots of study uh, spaces, as well as interesting gathering uh, places within the building. Um, something that might be of interest to any students that are joining us um, as a, a full-time international student, um, we have what's called the Intercultural Mentoring Program. And this is something that um, they really you know, work hand in hand with you uh, once you're admitted into um, one of our programs uh, to help you know, kind of orient you to studying in Germany. Um, they help you with registration and immigration issues, um, help you to find housing, um, answer any questions you might have about insurance and banking requirements. Um, they have different tours. Um, they organize excursions here in the Halbron region. I had the opportunity to join them for excursions uh, to Ludwigsburg and to Stuttgart, um, as well as to some interesting museums here around Habron. Um, so you don't, uh, it, it's a nice uh, thing to, to really kind of get you settled and to help you overcome or to avoid some of these culture, so uh, culture shock situations. Um, additionally, as part of the program, you're uh, paired together with a, with a German student um, to, that's going to be in a higher level semester than, than you. So they help you kind of navigate the differences here of the German education system and um, kind of help you get acquainted to living here in a foreign country. Um, as I said before, we're a very international faculty. We're the Faculty of International Business. So we, we welcome students uh, from all over the world and we really do like to celebrate this. Um, so every year we organize this International Day where um, students from different countries um, get to display some of the special foods that are that are native to their countries or some of the different traditions and dances and so forth. Um, it's held here in the atrium of our building um, and it really is a nice party. You can see some some nice pictures here. Um, and beyond your studying um, related activities, the university also offers a variety of sports. Um, there's uh, clubs for volleyball, if you'd want to learn how to salsa dance, um, um, if you need uh, help with uh, getting your resume or cover letter ready when you're applying for internships and jobs, um, that help is also available to you. Um, and our student union also um, organizes excursions to towns and cities in the regions. Uh, in the region. Um, for example, I, I know that they've been uh, in recent years visited some of the Christmas markets around Christmas time, um, as well as organized uh, ski trips um, in the Alps um, of southern Germany. Um, so there's there's lots of chances for you to get involved and stay active during your studies. So in a nutshell, uh, why would you want to come to Heilbronn to study? Um, I think what many of you would be looking for is just to experience a different culture and learn how uh, things are done outside of your own country. Um, Germany is a really good place to study. Um, you know, it's, it has some of the top universities in the world um, and it gets you access to all of the different industries uh, here in Europe. 
Um, it, it also kind of broadens your horizons to how people from different cultures study um, and it uh, exposes you to different cultures and to different uh, ways of learning. Um, I think studying outside of your of your of your home culture, um, it broadens your horizons and gives you this global mindset, uh, which is increasingly uh, beneficial um, in today's business world. Um, another really important uh, reason to study here in particular in our programs is that foreign languages are integrated into our curriculum. Um, so it's it's really going to help you to be able to communicate across cultures. Um, and I think anytime you're, you're spending time in a foreign country, um, you have the opportunity to learn a lot about yourself and to maybe challenge some of the things that, um, that, that you've grown up thinking um, about other cultures. Um, so this is something that's, uh, it, it, it's, I think it's a, one of the most important things um, as, you're, as you're studying in higher level education. Um, and then lastly, there's a possibility to stay and work in Germany after your studies. Um, after graduating from a, a bachelor's or a master's degree in Germany, um, you have the opportunity to apply for a work searching visa. And this visa allows you to stay here in Germany for up to 18 months while you're looking for uh, permanent work um, here uh, in Germany. Um, so it's not a situation where you're coming to Germany and then you finish your degree and then you immediately have to leave. Uh, with this work searching visa, you have the opportunity to, to actually search the, the job market and try to find something here in Germany. Um, and with all of our programs, um, they're highly marketable. Um, all of our students have a lot of success in finding um, either jobs that are maybe associated with their internships that they did as part of their studies, um, or to find something that's maybe in a different company, but in a similar field or so forth. So those are my uh, talking points for today. Um, here on our slide, you can uh, see my email address. So if I'm, I'm gonna go through the questions here in just a minute, but if there's something that I don't answer, um, I, I encourage you to reach out to me. And if I'm not able to answer the question, um, certainly I can get it to the person that would be able to help you out. So let me start tackling the questions here. And it looks like I've got quite a few. Uh, so the, the first question I have, let's see. How much does the wine cost? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about our university made wine. Uh, here in Germany, I don't know what the cost of wine is in the Ukraine, but um, as I come from the United States, um, I find it fairly, fairly affordable. I think a decent bottle of wine you could get for, for 10 to 15 euros. I think our university wine is in that price range. Um, and we offer uh, both red and white wine as well as uh, Prosecco or Secco or Sect, as we say here in Germany. The next question, do you cooperate with these companies in terms of student internships and what does it look like? Um, this is exactly the case. Um, so the companies that you saw there are some examples of companies uh, with which our students have had internships in the past. Uh, beyond working with these companies uh, with internships for our students, um, a lot of these uh, companies we have we have um, guest lecturers coming in um, to present real life cases in their businesses um, or to um, or to maybe explain some different uh, some different topics that are important to them in their businesses. And our next question um, that is the dormitories are located across the street from the educational buildings. Um, so the the one that I showed you, this is a, a dormitory that's located in Sontheim, which is the other campus that's here in Hebron. Um, these official student dorms um, are all located in Sontheim. Um, and maybe I should mention Sontheim is, is not far away from, uh, from the Buildings campus, which is where we're located. Um, I would say the majority of our students are actually living in Sontheim. Um, but it's a very easy bicycle ride, um, less than 10 minutes 
Um, there's also buses that run uh, between these locations um, every 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so it's, it's not an inconvenient place to live. Um, but beyond the, the official student dorms there in Sondheim, there are dormitories that are um, closer to our university or to our campus here on the Bildungs campus. Um, these are mostly privately run student dormitories. They're going to be a, a bit more expensive, um, but from my point of view, they're still, um, they're still reasonably priced. Okay. What is the connection between art and international business? I think this has to do with um, the the title of our degrees. So we offer here in our faculty Master of Arts and Master of Science um, in how they are related to international business. Um, maybe it's a, just a difference in language. Um, a Master of Art generally is a, is a um, seven semester program, but I think this is also true of uh, bachelor of art, a bachelor of arts and bachelor of science are generally the same. I, I can't answer this question. Um, they're both uh, they're both recognized in the same way. Um, so maybe don't focus so much on the fact that it's a uh, art versus science. Um, I know in the United States, for example, a lot of business related bachelor's degrees or business administration degrees. So that's a BBA. Um, so this one I can't answer. Um, hopefully, hopefully maybe you can do some research on your own and, and find out particularly what the differences are. All right, I'm interested in informatics. Could you tell me the requirements for applicants and do you have a course in English? Um, unfortunately, I'm not that familiar with our other faculties programs. For sure, there are programs that are in informatics. Um, it depends if you're talking about English or um, if you're talking about bachelor and master's programs. Um, I know there's some programs um, in the IT area um, that don't have the same level of German requirements, at least from the very beginning, but I would encourage you to visit the university's website um, and there you can find a, a complete list of all the different uh, bachelor's and master's degrees that are offered and what their requirements are um, as far as knowledge of German. Generally speaking, all of the bachelor's degrees here at the university do require knowledge of German. There may just be one or two exceptions. Um, but again, please check our website for, the, for that information. Um, let's see. Uh, is there an opportunity to study with you on an exchange from a Ukrainian university? Um, we do have some partner universities in the Ukraine. Um, what I would recommend you to do is to visit our website. Um, and uh, on our website, you can see the list of partner universities here in our faculty. Um, I want to say there's maybe two or three universities in the Ukraine that, in, that, we, that we partner with, but I don't have that easily in hand at the moment. Um, in case if I have a BA in international relations, do I need to take GMAT or GRE in order to be admitted to an MA in international business? Uh, for our, our MIBEM program, which is a master in international business and intercultural management, we do not require um, like a GMAT or a GRE. Um, basically, um, as part of the admission requirements, um, you would need to have a business related degree, typically international relations satisfies this requirement. Um, your GPA would need to be at least a 2.5 um, as determined by studio and colleague constants. Um, and then you would need to prove your English skills in order to gain admission into the program. But no, um, no entrance qualification like GMAT or GR GRE is required. What is the thesis task? 
Um, so this is uh, the final, like, you know, once you've completed your study, you're going to pick a topic and then you're going to conduct extensive research into this topic and produce a research paper. Um, generally, these papers are 30 pages, maybe for a bachelor's degree, somewhat longer for a master's degree. Uh, for example, my master's thesis was around 90 pages. Um, but basically, during this process, you're going to pick a topic, um, something that you're really interested in, um, and you're going to conduct research, uh, both of literature as well as practical research into this topic, um, and produce a comprehensive paper that, uh, that answers the questions that you have posed as part of your thesis. Going specifically about running your own wine business or working at other levels, um, I'm not quite sure I understand this question. Uh, potentially, it has more to do with our wine marketing and management program. Um, and what I would recommend, um, you know, if you have particular questions about uh, what this uh, this program prepares students to do, the first thing I would do is take a look at the at the website for the program, and you can get to that by visiting the website that we have linked at the top of your screen here. Um, so review that information, and if there's additional information that you're looking for, um, you'll find contact information for our study program coordinator, um, and she'd be happy to, to help you out with any particular questions about um, what types of things are taught during the program and what you're able to do um, after completing this program. So tell me more about Encourage uh, Abroad Study. Um, so all of our students have the opportunity to study abroad. Typically, this is done uh, in the fourth semester. Um, typically, you would be, you know, depending on which language or culture track you're doing, you would want to study um, at one of our universities in that area. For example, if you're um, if you're an international business and a cultural studies student um, and your focus is on um, Spanish and the Spanish speaking world, um, it would be a great benefit to you to go to our um, one of our partner universities in Spain, for example, um, and study there. Um, typically, uh, an exchange semester is one semester, um, so six months. Um, but it's also possible to study abroad for one year as part of your studies. Um, during these study abroad periods, you're actually um, taking courses that fulfill requirements here for your degree in Halbron. Do you have something like language courses for applicants uh, between semesters? Um, I think you're asking if if we have courses before you apply in order to meet the requirements. Um, we don't offer anything for any of our programs. Uh, I think for some of the maybe one or two of the other faculties, there is a possibility to have uh, it's called Access to, and this is a, a program um, during which you like you you learn German. Um, but unfortunately, this isn't available for our programs here in the Faculty of International Business. Uh, but certainly, there's lots of other possibilities for language courses outside of our university. Um, here in Halbron, for example, there's the Volkshochschule, um, as well as some um, some privately owned language schools. And I think this question is, um, what's the difference between our MIBEM program and our NTE program? Um, hopefully, this was, this was already asked before I, I presented the two. Uh, the MIBEM program, International Business Intercultural Management, um, this program focuses not so much on tourism. Um, in this program, you're, you're, you're learning more of the traditional topics of business, like economics, uh, finance, uh, human resources. 
um, as well as intercultural uh, management topics and sustainability. Um, our NTE program is sustainable tourism development. Um, so your, pro, your, your curriculum here is more focusing on tourism topics um, as well as sustainability and geography um, type related uh, subjects. Um, there are, are there special requirements for admission to wine management? Um, you can see in the presentation that uh, the requirement for wine management is, uh, you know, your high school diploma, um, as well as knowledge of, uh, of German and some knowledge of English. Uh, but certainly you can read more about this on the program website. Um, to see perhaps uh, you're interested in how uh, applicants are selected for admission. Um, and this might be the information that you're, you're more looking for. Um, in our presentation, let me switch back to that. Um, you can see in this slide, um, this is uh, the slide that kind of shows how, how candidates are selected um, to join our different programs. So you can see here uh, for wine marketing and management, um, what's required or what's considered in the application process. Okay. I'm interested in master's degree in management. I finished marketing in Kiev National University of Technology and Design. Um, do I need to take any exams? How is the diploma validated? Um, as I said before, for our master's programs, there isn't a requirement that you take, uh, for example, a GMAT or a GRE exam. Um, the only thing that you need to, um, to have is a bachelor's degree in a business related field with at least a 2.5 grade point average according to the German scale. Um, if you're, since your uh, degree is from a Ukrainian institution, um, you do have to follow this process of recognition through a studium colleague constants. Um, and this is going to require that you send um, different documents to them in order to verify that your degree from the Ukraine is equivalent to a German bachelor's degree. Um, so you can see on our website, um, all of the particulars of how this process works. Um, and if you have further questions, you know, you're always welcome to contact me um, and I'll try to help you out as best I can and what you need to do. Do students study in classrooms or do practice in the third semester? Um, I guess this is for the, the master's programs. Um, your students are studying in classrooms generally only in the first and the second sem semesters. Um, in the third semester, um, you have the option to either immediately start writing your master's thesis, or you can use that third semester to uh, perhaps do a, a voluntary internship or to study abroad for a semester. Um, the important thing to remember is with the master's uh, degree is that uh, you need to register the topic of your thesis um, at the latest six months after you have completed all of the classroom courses. Um, so for most students who have passed all of their courses in the first and second semester, they would have in, until the very end of the third semester in order to submit their thesis topic, and then they have in, until the end of a fourth semester in order to submit their final thesis. Um, so the answer to this question is, in the third semester, generally students are not taking any classes in classrooms. Um, when is the deadline for the, I guess this is asking when the deadline for the master's programs is. Um, our deadline for the master's application to Halbron University is always July or July 15th. Um, but keep in mind that in order to, to apply uh, to Halbron University, you first need to apply for recognition of your certificates with student, student colleague constants. This takes uh, one month to two months, potentially, depending on how complete your documents are when you submit them. Um, so you want to get started with this process as soon as possible. 
Um, with Studi and Colli Constance, you can you can apply there anytime during the year. Um, and once you've applied there and received the certificate of recognition, this certificate is good forever. So you don't need to do this, um, you know, if you decide to apply next year, for example. Um, so the easy answer to this question is apply to Studi and Colli Constance no later than June 1st. Um, and then also apply to Hebron University by July 15th. Um, in case if I have a BA in international relations, do I need to take GMAT or GRE in order to be admitted to the MA international business? Um, the answer to this, as I said before, is no. There's no requirement for our applicants to our master's programs to take a GMAT or a GRE exam. I did, here's the question, did you graduate from Halbron yourself and which faculty? Tell us about my experience. So actually I did graduate from Halbron University. Um, actually I studied the Master of Arts in International Business and Intercultural Management. Um, I came to Halbron in 2016 and I finished my degree in 2018. Um, and since that time I've been working here um, in our Faculty of International Business. Um, my position here is I'm the uh, program coordinator for the uh, MIBEM program, the International Business Intercultural Management uh, Program, um, as well as um, an advisor on international relations. Um, my experience here as a student was amazing. Um, I, I maybe am a different type of student. Um, I graduated uh, with a bachelor's degree in the US in finance and human resources. And then I worked for, a, for a, uh, I don't know, 13 or 14 years. Um, and then after working, I decided to go back to school for my master's degree. Um, and I chose to come here to Germany to study that. Um, so for me, coming and joining the, the master's program was something completely different. I had never lived outside of the United States before that time. Um, so perhaps I'm a bit like, you guys um, in that this may be your first experience living away from home or away from your home country. Um, but I found uh, Habran to be the perfect school. Um, one thing that I really did like about studying here is that um, Habran is not a, a huge city. And I think this really helps for international students um, because you're not overwhelmed by a big city. Um, how broad you can walk the entire city, you know, to get from one end to the other, maybe it takes you 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and so you don't really get lost and you're not overwhelmed by different people. And um, it's not uncommon that as I walk through the city that I, I see four or five people just on a brief walk um, that I know. Um, so you you kind of get this feeling of community here in Hebron that you may not get in a city like Munich or Cologne or Frankfurt or Berlin. Um, so I, th I think this is a, a, a great place to gain entry into the country, um, especially if you're if you're looking to kind of stay here and to to grow your your network of um, colleagues. Um, I find that also in smaller cities, um, I think the, the German people are very welcoming. Um, I, I've been welcomed into uh, lots of different groups here. This may be something that's um, maybe different than what you've heard in the past, but certainly as a student, um, it, it's not a challenge to integrate. Um, I think German students, um, especially young students, are very welcoming of, of foreigners and they're very excited to speak English, for example, or if they know Spanish, for example, they're Ukrainian. Uh, you may find fewer of those here in, in Hebron than, than in other places. I think they're very eager to practice their foreign languages. So I, th I think this is a great, uh, a great place to get started. So hopefully that kind of gives you a good impression of my own experience here in Hebron. Um, how are retakes of academic debts organized? I'm not sure I understand this question um, completely. Um, I don't know if this is referring to, to debt as in money or if it's maybe un, unfinished courses or 
courses that are failed. So um, if you're still online, perhaps you're you're able to clarify that question and then I'll, I'll try to address it. Is it possible to change the program? This is a pretty complicated um, a pretty complicated uh, process um, that I'm not an expert in. Um, but I think what you would have to do is, so for example, if you're admitted into, into our tourism management program and you later decide that you would rather study uh, hospitality management, uh, I believe the process is that you would need to apply to that other program, be accepted, and then um, apply for recognition of what you've, any courses that you've already taken that are also applicable to the, uh, to the other program that you study. Is there something like open door days? Um, usually we do have these. Um, we haven't done them um, recently because of COVID. Uh, but typically we have, um, especially for our bachelor's programs, we have what's called Studieren, uh, Studien Probieren. Um, this is typically done once per year. I think it's actually coming up in the next few months um, where students uh, or high school students, for example, um, are able to come in and um, to kind of join a lecture. Um, but you'll be you would be able to to read more about this on our website the particular dates so for example if you're if you're planning to be here in Hebron and would like to to join um, you'd find all the details about this on our university website um, is it possible to apply for admission in advance and at the end of the school add a certificate uh, zeno points to them um, this is not a possibility for students with foreign degrees because these degrees um, need to be validated by studio and colleague constants. Um, and I believe for their process, they require final documents. So it's not a possibility, for example, if you're um, if you're if you haven't quite finished your bachelor's degree, uh, for example, to apply. Uh, for a master's degree because they, they do need like final certificates as part of the validation process. Um, it has the opportunity to attend lectures as free listeners. Um, this is a this is a possibility during our um, our study days, the Studier and Probieren um, uh, event. Um, it's uh, not so common that uh, outside um, individuals are allowed into the lectures. This would really be at the discretion of the individual professor. Okay, and then I, I just see the reply back. She, uh, this person means uh, failed exam. So what happens if you fail an exam? Um, and the, the easiest answer to this is that you retake the exam either in the next semester, the next semester or the next time that particular course is offered. Um, and that grade replaces the grade um, that the non passing grade um, that you got the first time. Um, the rule is that um, you're only able to take a course three times. Um, so if you fail it a third time, then uh, it's not possible to continue in the program. And uh, do you need medical insurance? And how often should it be updated? Um, for sure, you need medical insurance. This is something that you have to prove uh, during the enrollment process with our academic department. Um, you should you should uh, verify with your insurance in your home country if this is if this covers you here in Germany. Um, but I think in most cases they're requiring um, that you have a German medical insurance. Um, and you need to keep this insurance active the entire time of your studies here. Okay, so those were, that was the end of my list of questions. Are there any other questions?
I'll stay on for uh, you know a few more minutes um, in case you do have questions. I'm here to answer for you know at least the next ten minutes. So um, if you have anything, please please type it in and I'll try to answer it for you. Um, if you don't have any other questions and uh, would like to go ahead and log off, I'd like to personally thank you uh, for joining us uh, during the presentation, um, as well as to thank you on behalf of our faculty and of Hal Brown University. Um, so I wish you all the best, and we look forward to perhaps receiving an application from you in the near future. So. Um, yes, so Travis, thank you very much. И также спасибо всем, кто был с нами на этой презентации. Вот буквально через 10 минут начнется следующее, поэтому по ссылочкам переходите. And for Travis, uh, thank you once again. Uh, wish you strong health, good luck, all the best, and waiting for you next time. Thank you very much.